Thank you very much indeed, uh, Declan, uh, for those kind words of introduction. I'm going to start, unfortunately, by showing you some numbers and some graphs and some maps. I apologize for that in the way that uh, we start, but it's just interesting to try and locate and think about uh, Derby in that broader context of urban Britain. And that's really what the Centre for Cities is interested in. We're interested in the economic performance of the biggest, the 64 biggest urban areas in Britain. And Derby is obviously uh, one of them. So I'm going to give you a sense as to how we think about what's going on in Derby, how it compares and relates to other parts of the country. And that, in a sense, some of those indicators are the indicators that developers, investors, businesses are using uh, and considering when they're thinking about where they invest, uh, where they locate, and where they prioritize. And interestingly, and particularly, these are the kind of indicators also that government uh, uses when it thinks about where to deploy uh, its uh, rapidly diminishing uh, resources, which places will give me more bang for my buck. So that's really what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about where we've been, good guide to the future, uh, imperfect as it is, and where I think some of the uh, challenges are for Derby. Apologies for you at the back. Uh, you'll see you get a sense of uh, a lot of these graphs and images. You just need to have a sense of them. But the point, in a sense, is this is job density across Britain. Britain, like all advanced in countries, is incredibly spiky. Our economic activity is not spread across the country. It is concentrated in our urban areas and is increasingly becoming more concentrated in our urban areas. This is a pattern that we see in uh, North America and indeed most of Europe and increasingly in the Far East. Our cities are the places where things happen, where people want to live, where businesses want to be, where ideas are generated, where new things are produced and sold and consumed. And that is likely to continue. And you can just see that on the map. When we turn to Derby, from our point of view, we think about Derby as being a mid-sized city. So if you look at population, about a quarter of a million, 250,000, places it in that ranking of 1 to 64, somewhere in the middle, around the 30 mark. So there obviously there are bigger cities, London being the biggest, and there are some smaller cities uh, below Derby at around 120,000, and that's our cutoff. Places like Worthing uh, and indeed Cambridge being at the smaller end. So Derby is mid-sized uh, and mid-ranked in some respects. Uh, you can see here, actually, when we look at productivity measurement, GVA per worker, actually it gets towards uh, the top 10. So good productive activity. When you think of business starts, it reserves back to uh, the middle of uh, the ranking. If you look at quali no formal qualifications, that's the population, the resident population with no skills, no qualifications at all, then you can see mid rank. Equally, wages, you can see there 482, which places at 16. Interestingly, on wages particularly, when you look at the workplace wages, workplace wages in Derby are around £650 per week. Actually, that brings you into the top 10, and in some respects, into the top five, one of the highest places outside of uh, the southeast for workplace wages, which tells you a story about the role of Derby, not only for the residents of Derby, but actually the people who live outside of Derby. Many of you probably work in Derby, but maybe not live here, but nevertheless uh, benefit from being in and around uh, Derby. So mid-sized, mid-ranked, but with some peaks uh, and some good things. You can see broadband coverage places you fourth uh, in the country overall uh, in terms of broadband coverage, which is uh, obviously a particularly important thing. So that's where we are. I want to talk to you a little bit about movement. Talk to you a little bit about what's going on with people. Where people are moving to, where they're moving from. So these three maps, again, at the back, what you're interested in is green is good and red is not so good. Don't worry about the numbers. This is internal migration over a three-year period, people moving from city to city. This map here shows you across the entire population, those people that are moving to Derby, those people that are moving away from Derby to another city. Lose it so you can see more green uh, than red there. More gains. This map here shows you movement again in this age bracket, 18 to 21. Primarily, people go into study in places. You can see gains from some of the southeast uh, towns and cities and some losses 
particularly uh, up into Leeds and Sheffield. Derby loses to some of the large cities like Sheffield and Leeds. People go in there to acquire uh, an education, but interestingly gains from other big cities like Birmingham. So kind of interesting there about where people are moving to. This map essentially shows you having acquired uh, those qualifications, this is 22 to 30. Where are people then moving to begin to develop their career? And again, you can see a mixed pattern of some places gaining, Derby gaining overall. So we know that the population of Derby is growing. It's been growing uh, consistently for the last decade or so. This gives you a sense as to where people are moving around. Let me just touch on this other point. So this now talks to you about actually where people, how that population uh, is expanding or not. So it ignores natural births and deaths and the increases as a result of that. But it shows you to the degree to which you're gaining from, uh, from migration internally, from somewhere else in the UK, or internationally. So interestingly, this is internal. So you'll see, interestedly, that our urban areas, the way that we define them at least, many of them lose when we think about um, what's going on internally. They're losing to uh, neighboring authorities that we don't class as urban or indeed into rural areas. But what's very interesting is when you look at international migration. London actually loses population internally to other parts of the country, but it's a massive gainer in terms of international migrants coming into the country, living and working in London. Same story in Derby. Three and a half thousand net gain in terms of international migrants coming into the city over a period 09 to 12. So it's gaining people coming into the country for the first time, coming there to Derby. So there's kind of interesting story about the attractiveness of the city, not only to people in the UK, in and around Derby, but internationally. And we know that you know, there are benefits associated with international uh, populations and migrants in terms of entrepreneurialism and connections to markets overseas. So kind of interesting dynamic, not only thinking about how we can be attractive to other parts of the UK, but actually how do we become uh, increasingly attractive to other parts uh, of uh, the world. I'll talk a little bit now about the economy, very briefly. So the outstanding point, you all know it, but the outstanding point in a sense of the Derby economy, the thing that sets it apart in many respects from other mid-sized cities and indeed from many other cities is this dominance uh, of advanced manufacturing particularly. You can see it there. Nearly 9.5% of the employment base in the, in, the, in the city is in that advanced manufacturing uh, group. Very important. You can see it's an outlier in, compared to other places. Everywhere you go, in no disrespect, everybody will tell you they've got some advantage or some concentration or some cluster on advanced manufacturing. They're all world class. They're all dominant in some respects. Here, everywhere we go, we always nod and grin and have a little smile to ourselves and say, of course you are. In this instance, it does appear, at least compared to everywhere else, that there is some truth in that. And that's important. It's got a real domination of advanced manufacturing. And let's be clear, it's in advanced manufacturing where this country has a competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis other locations across the globe. It's in that bit there that we are really dominant. Broader manufacturing continues to decline in terms of employment numbers, even if productivity goes up. It's in advanced manufacturing, that combination of ideas, innovation, and production is where we are. And that seems to suggest that Derby does genuinely have something going for it over and above other places. And what's interesting, this is an observation, is that many of these firms, Rolls-Royce, Bombardier, Toyota, not the only ones, but certainly the big dominant world-class assets and institutions and firms based in this city, are all based outside of the city centre. Interestingly, for, we know for good reasons, in a sense, the demands that they have uh, on the space uh, that they require, why they're located there. So it's kind of interesting in the sense as to why they're located where they are. And that's good. You know, we want these firms to be based in Derby, but and here's an interesting point. It does have implications for how we think about other aspects of 
the city, and particularly that city centre. In a sense, those firms that are located on edge of town, out of, out of town, as good as they are, tend to have smaller overall city effects. They have, they have less indirect benefits for the city compared to those that are based in city centres. So kind of interesting points. And this is what I would illustrate. So this is a graph, again, you don't need to worry so much about the numbers at the back. This shows you the degree to which our 64 places, their economies, are decentralising or centralising. So is the city centre of these cities becoming more dominant or less dominant over time in terms of the overall share of jobs? Two-thirds of our cities are decentralising. Nearly all of our big cities, Birmingham, Leeds, London, Manchester, are all centralising. Their city centres are growing at a much faster pace than the rest of the city. Interestingly, in Derby, when we look at the data, we see two things. One, the city centre has grown. It's not declining, it's grown by 4% in terms of employment base over the period that we looked at. So that's good. There are more jobs in the city centre than there were. That ring outside of the city centre has grown over the same period by 21%. So in a sense, there's kind of interesting dynamics going on as to why, where this growth and this activity is taking place. Now, you might say, well, don't worry, a job's a job. It's a good thing. Any job is a good job. Well, to a degree, that's true. But when we think about some of the things that John was talking to us about at the outset, where we get innovation from, why we get innovation, what are the factors, the issues that drive innovation outside of big firms, outside of big firms like Rolls-Royce that essentially deal with all those sorts of issues internally and through their supply chains. How do we get innovation? How do we get new ideas? How do we get more activity going on? The two things we should be thinking about is density and proximity. Those are the things that increasingly matter if we think about business development, business formation and expansion. Density and proximity. So then we turn to where we are in terms of uh, the city centre. This shows you the share of different sectors and where they are, their likelihood, if they're in Derby, whether they're in the city centre or not. <coughs> so the obvious point is some firms with some characteristics prefer, choose, get massive benefits from being in city centres. They don't think about space and places equally. They don't think, can I be in an out-of-town location on an industrial park, or can I be in the city centre? That's not the debate or discussion they're having in regards to Derby. They're thinking, is Derby city centre more conducive to my business than Nottingham city centre? That's the conversation, or indeed international and European. So you can see here, over 50% of the financial services activity that takes place in uh, Derby is located in the city centre. Financial services firms and KIBS firms gain massively in terms of their internal performance from being closely located to related businesses and activities. They gain from what we term, Evan Davis has termed in his programme, if you've seen it, agglomeration. One plus one equals three. There are spillovers and gains from throwing businesses of certain types together that the city benefits from. And this is the kind of challenge. You can see it dominating in terms of these sorts of industries and these sorts of activities. And when we think about where the UK is as a country and our cities are in the future, it's in knowledge intensive activities that we should be thinking about much more than other activities. Restaurants is down there, retail is down there. This is the general share for private. So you can see the domination and then manufacturing and construction we wouldn't expect those to be in the city centre because they demand something else. So really thinking about, and the other point would be in terms of city centres and the businesses located on them, they are less cost sensitive. They are not there because they're the cheapest locations, they're the best locations, which means that their, their ability and their willingness to move elsewhere is somewhat constrained. They're there for reasons other than cost, which really helps when we think about how we really develop the, the economy. So where do, where, do we, where do we go? Well, John's talked about this. These are some of your images I've just pinched uh, and pushed onto a, onto a slide. It's thinking about providing the space that these businesses need. 
It's not large, huge corporates necessarily. It's small firms using quirky locations that are enabled through broadband, et cetera, et cetera. It's making sure that they can co-locate either permanently or on a flexible basis. So it's providing the space. It's also providing the services. Rail connections and rail networks to London and elsewhere in the UK and indeed internationally, very, very important. So providing those kind of services that people want. And then it's providing those amenities. Breaks my heart as an economist to think about people actually consider things that make them happy uh, and uh, they gain pleasure from rather than only thinking about uh, work. But actually what we see in terms of patterns of city centre living and these firms is that we should be thinking about city centres as places of consumption as much as and as well as places of uh, production. So it's not only going there to do work, it's actually the engagement with others uh, like us uh, in terms of in a much more set social uh, environment and cultural environment that we need to be thinking about as well. So to summarise, obvious points. Building on these, this is not to say that you know, the Rolls-Royce and the edge of town locations that we're in and around now are not important. They clearly are. These are the places where Dar that makes Derby stand out. We need to make sure that whatever we're doing is providing us an environment for these edge of town, these Rolls-Royces and others to continue to thrive and <coughs> succeed here in Derby. We need to think about the city centre, and John again alluded to this, but all the development and the focus on the city centre, creating an environment that is attractive to the new types of businesses that we see, to the new types of workers that we increasingly see wanted to be located in places like Derby uh, and other cities across uh, the country. And then finally, it's not only about what you do in Derby, but it's actually what Derby does with others, thinking about how it can partner with through the key cities uh, arrangement, which Adam might mention, other medium-sized similar cities, how can you come together to share experiences and, and learn from each other, and indeed, where needed, make the case to government and others, particularly investors, that this is a place that uh, is open for business uh, and is ripe for business uh, and where money and returns uh, can be made. Thank you very much. <laughs>